Philippines and across the globe. And, and so it's not, like Hans said, it's not a mere coincidence that we are gathered here now at the International House. Um, because an, as an international student watching events spiral so far away from home, I am genuinely appreciative of this venue and this expression of solidarity uh, conveyed by the iHouse uh, global community. And being a Filipino, I am really moved by the countless acts of solidarity. And for this event, this is the energy and this is the mobilizing force that I hope uh, that I hope this this event would uh, contribute to and would uh, amplify. Um, so the idea behind the gathering is really simple. We are here to pay our respects to those who have uh, departed, many of whom uh, were finally laid to rest yesterday in mass graves. And at the same time, we are here to help initiate and identify concrete ways to extend support to those who survive. And, and, and um, the, the, I have three points really that I want to emphasize in this ceremony. First is that the loss is indeed immense. It's unspeakable, it's even senseless. But there are many who survive and who would be needing a whole lot as they begin to recover and rebuild their homes, their communities, and their lives. And, and so this leads me to my second point, and, and that is as we extend help in terms of urgent and basic needs, perhaps we can also be more ambitious and more strategic in our generosity. An entire city of a quarter million people was flattened along with many other towns across the archipelago. And, and so as we offer relief, I am also hoping that some of us who have more to give might also be compelled to, to go beyond relief by contributing to what will be a long and possibly drawn out period of reconstruction. We need to have an eye out for geographic locations that might be hard to reach and also to population segments that are really um, particularly at risk and vulnerable, ex especially children and young girls. So there are a lot of possible organizations to support and we came up with a list of those organizations and um, one of them, for instance, Save the Children in the Philippines, I know will be initiating programs targeted for this special segment. The third and last point that I would like to, to make is that uh, I would just like to reiterate what has already been eloquently said by our climate negotiator, Naderev Sanyo. In his uh, intervention at the con at the COP19 in war, so where world leaders are speaking now. I know it's difficult to attribute a single weather, extreme weather event to climate change. But um, being a child who grew up with these routine spells of typhoon and heavy rains, I know that this year what happened is really unusual. And I shudder to think that uh, we are going to have a future of even more extreme weather conditions should we not be able to avert the climate crisis. And so as Yep Sanyu pointed out, as a nation we have a clear stake in these climate discussions being at the receiving end of the, uh, these extreme weather events and as a nation we also refuse to resign ourselves to a future where super typhoons like Haiyan become a way of life. And we refuse to accept that running away from storms, evacuating our families, suffering the devastation and misery, counting our dead, become a way of life. 
And so, I enjoin all of you whose hearts and humanity have been touched by this tragedy to also reflect upon this dire concern as we prepare to take a moment of silence for the victims and survivors of Typhoon Yolanda. Um, please let us bow our heads and have a minute of silence for the victims and survivors. Thank you very much.